oceans, that yes. we love our oceans. We're also sending a message to the federal government that we are rejecting offshore oil and gas drilling. Woo! Woo! Not in our ocean. We really want to say thank you to our assembly leaders who are here today, Assemblyman Engelbright, Assemblywoman uh, Pellegrino, Assemblyman Thiel, and Assemblyman Dursa. We said it right. Said it right. <laughs> he said it means the bear. <laughs> uh, but we want to send them a giant thank you. about where we live, and we intend to protect them. Yes. So thank you, Assembly Woo. members, for allowing our voices to be heard. <laughs> the current federal process for public input is really making a mockery out of democracy, and we will not allow that to happen. The BOEM public input sessions are not located here on Long Island. They're not even in New York City. They're located in Albany, where people don't live on the coast. Well, we love Albany, but I don't know yeah. But Albany constituents are not as impacted as we are here on Long Island. As Long Islanders, we consider it our job and our ethical obligation to protect our oceans, our bays, and our estuaries. That is what we love about Long Island. That is the economic driver for Long Island. And that is the reason we live on Long Island. And we are stewards of that ocean, Amen. stewards of those bays, of our fishing, of our shell fishing, and all that it is that makes our island a special place to live. And we intend to protect it. It's our job, and this will not happen on our watch. Here, here. <laughs> by an environmental giant in New York State. Uh, Assemblyman Engelbright also serves as chair of the Environmental Conservation Committee in the New York State Assembly. So Assemblyman Engelbright. They could have held it in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been worse. But the foothills of the Adirondacks are too far from the ocean. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for helping to send the signal that it's a, a complete outrage yeah. that the federal government wants to open our coast uh, in coastal New York to offshore oil and gas drilling. Just the exploration process will kill uh, endangered species, our, our Atlantic mm -hmm. right whales and finbacks. Um, we were so celebratory just a couple of years ago that finbacks were, were uh, gathering off of Long Beach. Uh, we don't want that replaced uh, with derricks in, in the distance. So uh, what does it mean to threaten uh, the economy of Long Island? It means everything. The people who live here live here because they value living next to the sea. They value the opportunity to have uh, their children play in clean sand on Jones Beach. We don't want that mucked up with oil. Uh, we don't want dead seabirds washing the shore, as we have seen in other places where oil drilling has been taking place. But we also don't want our largest economy, $34 billion, each year creates hundreds of thousands of jobs here on Long Island, and it's because we have clean water in our offshore, shallow, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, continental, continental shelf uh, waters. I am so privileged to be here today with my colleagues. Uh, they're, I'm sure, going to offer their own comments, but. Uh, uh, we stand united with you in opposing the idea of despoiling our coastline. And uh, 
we're going to take all of the comments that we hear today and convey them to the federal uh, authorities and hope that they listen. We're also introducing today legislation at uh, the state level to kind of catch up with the uh, we, we assumed for many years that the federal government wasn't going to violate us. We can't assume that anymore. And so the missing pieces for our coastal waters that are under state jurisdiction, the piece of legislation that we're introducing today, Assembly Bill 8919, uh, will protect our coastal waters that are under state jurisdiction. We're introducing that bill as of yesterday, and uh, we will uh, hopefully have all of your support as we go forward uh, through the process of advancing that to the governor's desk for signature. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Sam, so we do so much. We're going to do now a rapid two-minute succession here. So we have uh, we have a number of uh, of the uh, uh, nonprofit organizations who many of them devoted their life um, to ocean protection. So we're going to do some elected officials and intermix with some of the uh, the environmentalists who have worked so hard on uh, protection of our oceans, literally for decades. So we'll start. Assemblyman. Thank you, thank you very much for this opportunity. I have uh, some remarks prepared that I would like to convey to you. I'm Assemblyman Anthony Durso. I represent in the 16 to AD. That's the north shore of Nassau County, right on the sound. And I'm proud to be here. Let me begin by saying that the wrong-headed plan by the Trump administration to lease the outer continental shelves of the North Atlantic ocean for the exploration of much of drilling that goes into the process for oil and natural gas has the potential of a major negative impact on water quality, marine life, recreational activities, and land values. And what about the potential of oil spills on the region? Have we forgotten that in 2010 deep water horizon of the coast of Louisiana. No, we no, 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 no. So, therefore, it is our responsibility to stop this proposal on its tracks. Should it be executed, we are destined to remain dependent on the dirty fossils well into the future. So, let's remain committed to our pursuit to clean, dependable, and renewable solar, wind, and thermal energy. It has been proven that clean energy cost is competitive and creates high-paying jobs. Let's not turn back the clock. Let's move it forward and let's give it a, a good fight. Thank you. <laughs> which uh, is Allie Chase, who's a senior policy analyst in the Oceans Program with the National Resources Defense Council. Yay! I'm Allie Chase. I'm with the Natural Resources Defense Council. And I really want to thank everyone for taking the time to be here today. This oil and gas drilling proposal is incredibly dangerous. It's the most extreme proposal by any administration ever. It puts virtually all of our public coastal waters at risk. The entire East Coast, the West Coast, the Gulf, Alaska, all are open for drilling under this plan. Sorry. And drilling or exploration anywhere along the East Coast could impact New York, could put us at risk. It, it's a threat to our oceans. It's a threat to our coastal economy that we need for food and for jobs and for recreation. So, I really appreciate everyone being here, and I think it's really important that the Trump administration hear from us that this is the time that we need to turn to clean energy and back away from this dangerous oil and gas leasing plan. Thank you. Here from our South Shore Assembly members, uh, Assemblywoman Christine Pellegrino. <laughs> Thank you 
so much for being here. And I offer my great thanks to my colleagues, especially to um, the great assemblyman, um, uh, Steve and Bill for calling us all here and giving us <laughs> to gather here today in solidarity against this, this tremendously dangerous uh, proposal and to give us the opportunity uh, to tell you about this legislation that we are announcing that would uh, protect our South Shore communities like my assembly district, the, uh, the ninth district along the South Shore of Long Island, um, and which would give us the opportunity to protect <coughs> all of you from the devastating effects of this offshore drilling proposal. And I am proud to stand with all of my assembly colleagues um, to fight to preserve Long Island's environmental safety, our property values, our economic vitality, our beautiful beaches and marine life. As New Yorkers, we deserve better than to be put at risk from the inherent dangers of drilling. The federal government's rollbacks are a huge step backwards at a time when we should be taking bold steps forwards. Yeah. to creating more green jobs and fostering a green economy. Nothing would be worse for my community than the inevitable oil spills, parts of which are still struggling to be made whole after Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. Yep. Therefore, as the newly uh, chairperson of the Commission on Toxic Substances and Hazardous Waste Commission, I am proud to be a co-sponsor of the bill that protects our environment and our community from this shore devastation. Thank you so much for being here with us. Okay, well what do you think the Sierra Club has to say about all of this? because we have in the house today uh, Shay O'Reilly, who's representing the Beyond Coal campaign with the Sierra Club. Shay? Thank you so much. So, last fall I went to a commemoration of the fifth anniversary of Superstorm Sandy in Lindenhurst, New York. We were driving there, me and one of my volunteers, and we actually had to turn around because it was a rainy day and the waters had come up over the road we were planning to take and it was a foot underwater. I want to talk about how climate change is going to affect us in the future and how Trump's dangerous plan to open up all of our coastlines to oil and gas drilling threatens to submerge Long Island, even as we're still working to recover and rebuild. Specifically, waters are rising here twice as fast as they are for the global average, and our land is also settling as a result both of glacial changes and tapping into our aquifer for drinking water. This is a dangerous plan, and it's a dangerous plan of particularly one man, Ryan Zinke, the Department of the Interior Secretary. He deserves that. It's <laughs> not just a place to open our coast for drilling, but also our public lands around the country for mining, especially coal mining and oil drilling. This is very dangerous. It can result in significantly exacerbating climate change here. And the good thing is that what Zinke doesn't know is that we actually have, well, he probably knows it, but he's ignoring it, we actually have the potential for energy independence that deal that works to solve the problem of climate change right here through the form of offshore wind power for <laughs> plan to get offshore wind off of our coast in a responsible way that takes into account our specific sensitive ecosystems and works with stakeholders to develop it. The opposite of this plan, in fact. So we're calling for more wind and no drilling, and I want to thank the assembly members here for showing Trump this is a fight he cannot win. and that is uh, the East End perspective. And one of the two people who are going to provide us that today is Assemblyman Fred Thiel, who has always worked tirelessly on protecting New York's natural resources and the beauty and the gem of the East End. Woo! This may not be, well, this may be the single worst idea to come out of Washington in the last year. <laughs> and if you've been following Washington, you know that it has a lot of competition to be the worst idea coming out of Washington. But this is certainly a terrible idea for Long Island. And yes, it's about the environment. 
but it's also about our local economy. On Long Island and on the east end of Long Island, our environment and our economy go hand in hand. We need clean water for our tourism industry, for the commercial fishing industry, the second home, second home industry. Our environment is our economy, and our economy is our environment. Now, this is an opportunity. We get to talk a little bit here at the beginning, but this is the opportunity for you to be heard today without having to travel to Albany. Now, I've been in, Al I've been in Albany a lot. I've been there in July and August. I can tell you that there is no sea breeze off the Hudson. It's a long way from the coastline to Albany. But this is your chance today to be heard and to send a message to the Trump administration. And while it is happy Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day today is also Ash Wednesday. So I hope that all of you this afternoon and today uh, give the Trump administration a good kick in the ash. Thank you. <laughs> obviously dangerous. It's not a question of when you'll have an oil spill. It's not a question of if you'll have an oil spill. It's a question of when you'll have an oil spill. Yeah. Right. And you've heard from other people, you know, our communities, they're, they're still recovering from Superstorm Sandy. Um, our local businesses out on the Rockaways, um, you know, people out on Staten Island, all the way through, through Long Island. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's particularly insulting um, that this administration continues to put the interests of, of wealthy oil companies above the interests of, yeah, yeah. of our local constituents, our local residents. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As long as surf riders here, we'll fight against all these all these bad ideas from the administration. So thank right. you. Thank you. today to present to the assembly people the letter that nine of the Suffolk County legislators signed on opposing this. So together, nice. let's stand against this and stop it from happening. Thank you. And now we'd like to hear a few words from Long Island Zone. The man was rescued more seals, more turtles, more whales, and more dolphins than anybody else on the East Coast. A very special person has joined us, Rob Giovanni, who's the founder and chief scientist of the Atlantic Marines Conservation Society. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for always trying to make me nervous. I appreciate it. <laughs> but it's an honor to be here with, with, with everybody speaking of this. Um, as Adrian alluded to, I have worked with Marine Mammal and Sea Turtle Rescue for 25 years. And what's, what I was thinking here, I was listening to everybody speak, but uh, it's interesting, when you're doing stranding work and you're out there on the beach in the winter alone responding to an animal, you feel that you're alone. 
Um, we have small teams. There's more, more people in this room than we have in the network over up and down the coast to respond to these animals. Seeing, looking around today, I realize we're not standing alone in trying to help yeah. these animals. And yeah. that's, what, that's what's a really great thing to see. Um, I was asked early on in my career, and we, we mentioned this, what was the worst stranding that, that I've ever seen by a bunch of students? And it's the ones that we can prevent. And these are the things that we can prevent. When we look at, at these choices that we make, my mom used to always tell me that whenever I did something that she didn't agree with, I would always say to her, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> this doesn't seem like a good idea at this time, and we need to really send that message that nice. we're having a lot of animals that come up for a variety of reasons. We don't need to add threats to those animals. from an organization whose sole mission it is and actually was established for protecting our ocean resources. So from Oceana today, we have with us Brian Langlis. Brian? You are in the 11th hour. The Bureau of Ocean Energy Management is required to solicit public comments on this horrible idea to expand offshore drilling. They're going to do this tomorrow briefly in Albany. Now, we're lucky on Long Island for two reasons. Number one, we have elected officials who care about what you think. And we have technology. So if you're at home, if you cannot participate in our hearings today, we still need you to submit your comments to Secretary Zinke and tell him no more offshore drilling. And you can do that by texting OCEAN to 52886. This will put you on a landing page with all of Secretary Zinke's information, and you let him know what you think about offshore drilling. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. 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 Excuse me. The number is five two eight eight six. Text Ocean O C E A N to five two eight eight six. Do it now. It takes one okay. minute. And also, there'll be a lot of live tweeting today with the hash hashtag no drill and why. So all of, the, of you will also be doing live tweeting. Let's all use that hashtag. Thank you, Woo. Assembly Woman. Appreciate that. Right. Okay, the last speaker and gets the last word is also someone else who has been protecting the beautiful East End of Long Island. In fact, the group's name is Group for the East End, and we're happy to have with us uh, today the Vice President, Aaron Virgin. Aaron? Are we really surprised the administration that wanted to drain the swamp now wants to drain the oceans? <laughs> no, no, no. They really, they've come up with a lot of disastrous plans. This could be the worst one. Um, but at the same time, New York State, under uh, our, our legislature and our, our governor have now passed a $2.5 billion infrastructure package to protect our water quality and infrastructure across the state, while the, while the federal government is just doing the opposite. Irreparable Ooh. harm. Uh, the thing is, though, we have the leadership here today under uh, Assemblyman Engelbright, the coalition of the many people who spoke today, and you all. This is just the beginning. It may be the 11th hour, but we're going to take the fight. We're going to win this fight. So here we go. Thank you very much. All right. So today we're going to have a hearing so that the public's voice is heard. Our message is clear. Oil and water don't mix. In fact, it's a recipe for disaster. We know that oil spills have invoked great harm. We know that the oil spill in the Gulf killed 80,000 birds, 6,000 sea turtles, and 26,000 marine mammals. We know that it killed the, uh, the economy of that region. We know that here on Long Island, our oceans generate $23 billion per year in economic health, as well as 300,000 jobs. These are things we cannot lose. They are too valuable. So today, we will make our voices heard. Today is the day we fight to protect our oceans. We cannot sit idly by. Silence means you agree. Right. We need to voice our opposition. There are three keys to democracy. It's getting up, showing up, and speaking up. And They are not oceans to be turned over Correct. into corporate control 
and corporate destruction. They are held in the public trust by the taxpayers, by the residents, for us and for future generations. This plan is not only irresponsible and short-sighted, it is solely generated by economic happiness for oil industries. This is a favor to energy industries put on the risk and the backs of the general public. It needs to be stopped. It will be stopped. All of you have been deputized now. We want to thank you for coming out, for showing up, getting up, and now inside, speaking up. Yeah.